Hello, and welcome to my Case Catalyst tutorial on Mistroke Dictionaries. How to make them, how to color code them, and why you want to do both those things. So let's start by going into our tutorial user. You'll notice I have two dictionaries. One of them is the Mistroke Dictionary. Um, oh, that wasn't supposed to be in here. Let's pretend it's empty. There we go. And the other is the, uh, but I already have a Mistroke Dictionary, which we will cover later for those of you who already have a Mistroke Dictionary but want to make it better. So let's get started. We'll go into Practice Dictionary. Practice <laughs> Dictionary. Practice. Anyway, we'll, we'll start a file. Here we go. All right. Append. So here's our file. Now let's say we want to write the word accident. No problem. You can see in my reveal codes, reveal vertical notes, uh, S-T-E-N-T, sedent. Perfect. Sedent, sedent, sedent. Not an issue. However, what if I drag in an L? That's a misstroke. Now, I could put this in a personal dictionary, but personally, I like to keep my personal dictionary a bit clean. Uh, I choose to put them in their own job dictionary. Uh, the reason for this is that I'm still a student, and I want to make sure I don't get into any bad habits by having my misstroke way of writing things becoming my normal way of writing things. Um, so to this end, I put it in its own dictionary. So let's go over here, Control Shift O, opens up other dictionary. We'll select misstroke, and there we are, accident. So, bam, accident, 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 accident. Now you can see a lot of these are misstrokes. However, they're all they all look the same. So what has this really gained me? Absolutely nothing, because we don't have this color coded yet. So let's write accident with the L one more time. And now Control Shift O. Um, I love when things already come up. Um, we have our misstroke dictionary defined. What we're going to do is go over here, go down to font color, open that up. Let's go with red because pops and accident. Now we are going to want to close that off with black or else everything we write on afterwards is going to be red. So click OK. And there we, there we go. Now we have accident coming up in red. Um, however, I should mention the only reason, reason this is happening is because I have to set the color. Now if you go to display, you're going to have the color section. This is where, you know, if you like having a different color background and things, this is where you adjust those colors. This is the trade-off. Um, this isn't something Catalyst was meant to do. There's no way to actually color code a dictionary. Uh, this is just a roundabout way I found to do it. So you can see if you have this on, your and this is default, by the way. This is what you're going to be on by default. Um, if you haven't messing with any colors, it'll look white. But otherwise, this is what you'll have. So this does us, this does nothing. To actually make it so we can see our font colors, we need to go back to display colors and select show font colors. And that's why it comes up in red. You can see down here in the reveal codes, font color red, word, font color black. Um, yeah. So this is a bit cumbersome though. No one wants to, you know, every time you want to define something, control shift O, blah, blah, blah. That's really slow. So for fun, let's take another word we might misstroke. Um, let's go with, I don't know, falafel. So falafel. What happens if we put a P into falafel? We get nothing. Misstroke. Hooray. Control Shift O. Let's go back here. Now we could go da da da, do all this. I don't want to have to do that every time I want to define a misstroke. I misstroke things a ton. So instead, what we're going to do is create a macro. For those of you who don't know, macros are when you record a series of keystrokes and it'll then play them back again very, very quickly, pretty much at the push of a button. So let's go to where we started. We go to Tools macro and record. Now at this point it started recording. It only record it only records keystrokes, so I'll just have to tell you what I'm actually clicking. So control shift O brings us other dictionary. We are already on the misstroke dictionary, but you might not always be. That just goes to whatever dictionary you last used. So we'll go Alt B, because that'll give us browse. Now misstroke we gotta write in you know writing in miss is probably enough. Enter. Uh, now you can see we're up here. So we want to do Alt F, which will open up this over here. F again brings us to font color, enter. R for red, enter. 
Alt F to close it, Alt F to open it. I know, it's silly. Um, enter, brings up font color again, enter for black. Now we want to click the arrow to the left once, and now our cursor is right where we want it to be. So we'll click stop, and we're going to, I've already actually made this macro, so I'll just save over it. Uh, misdefine. Uh, oh, if you're curious, these are other macros for uh, cart. Uh, dick pics is my dictionary entries that I moved from my personal to my update area over to my personal dictionary. I just made a macro for it. You know, dick pics, obviously. Um, and a couple of other things. But right now, let's focus on this misdefine. Uh, yeah, it already exists because it does. I'll replace that. Now, let's close this. So now, when we want to use falafel, we could, I guess, go to tools, macro, um, playback, macro, and then select misdefine. And there you go. And I could write, you know, f how do you spell falafel? Uh, falafel. Uh, however, that's not much better. Uh, if you don't bind your macros, they're pretty much useless. So there's two ways you can do this. One, you can go into your system files and go into the thing called default. I think it's a stupid name. It's There's a lot of things default, but in this case, the default folder is your default key map, keyboard map. I, however, like to go down over here and just double click that. Now, we could make it anything we want. There's a lot of unused um, key bindings. Since Control Shift O is define other, I like to use Control Shift M, you know, M for misstroke. So here we are. As you can see, there's nothing bound to it at the moment, so we'll double click that. Go up here. We want to go to keyboard and macros. When you do this, you'll see here are all the macros I have. So we want to use misdefine. Assign, close, and we'll save and close. So now I select falafel, I go control shift M, bam, there we go, falafel. Okay, so there we go. Um, now I will save and close this. Look at our misstroke dictionary, there we are accident, falafel, and you see, so long as you have um, these two things here, uh, you're, you're pretty much, you're good to go. Uh, now, there, let's, let's say you already have a misstroke dictionary. So we'll go into this one here. This, I just took a couple of entries out of my existing misstroke. I have hundreds of entries. I just took a few out. Now, let's say you've got enough that you don't want to have to go through and basically edit each one. So normally you'd have to go to here and then, you know, over here, font, blah, 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 black, red, meh. If you haven't guessed it, this can also be solved through the use of a macro. So uh, actually, you know what? My recording software only lets me do 10 minutes at a time. I'm going to brief intermission and then I will show you this. Okay, so to change an existing dictionary, now what we want to do is, again, go to Tools, go to Macro, and we're going to record our macro. So in this case, it is Enter, brings it up. We want to go Home to go to the beginning of uh, the word. Alt F will click this guy here. F again for font, Enter, R for red, Enter. Uh, now you don't want to do right arrow over because different words are different length. You want to hit end. End will bring you to the end of the entry. Um, because even if it, it might be like a, you know, five word phrase. So uh, Alt F closes, Alt F opens, enter, bring it up, enter for black, we're set. So once more, enter to confirm. There's our macro. Let's stop recording. And this is going to make all of our entries red, so we'll call it seeing red. Now, again, we want to bind it. This time, however, do not go into your manage jobs and to default, that, that's not going to help you because the keyboard maps for when you're in a dictionary are actually different. So you want to go down here, double click, and you're really only going to be using this once. You can define it as anything you want. You can define it as, um, oh, here's the one I used to take away all the red from my existing dictionary. So we'll use that one, use the number one. Double click that. Uh, d -d 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 are we on macro? What is going on here? Where's my macro?
Ah, there we are. Macros, uh, slightly different layout than the other one. And we'll use seeing red. Assign, replace, close, save and close. So here we are. Now, we are going to want to go by last modified. So you want the most recently modified to go to the bottom, and I'll show you why. Because if I hit the number one now, boom, 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 boom. It's always going to put the most recent modified to the bottom, which means you can just cl keep clicking away on your macro, and it'll you know cycle its way through all of those. However, do hmm, pardon me, do not start rapid clicking it. You know, hit it a nice like ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, ba bum sort of pace. If you just go click, 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 you're not going to give the macro enough time to execute and it just it becomes a jumbled mess. Uh, you can try it out and you'll see what I mean. So um, I'm not going to go through all 57 entries. You get the idea. That's how you can change an existing dictionary. Now let's go back into our practice so I can show you a, a couple of other sort of nice unexpected things I came across when I started using this dictionary. Um, well mostly just one really. Now, when I was writing, I had this one misstroke that was causing me a bit of trouble because I didn't know what I was actually misstroking, and that was STH. I knew I was stacking, I just didn't know if I was writing is this and stacking it, or this is and stacking that. So to this end, I decided I would make it a misstroke to find, so we'll control shift M. However, I wanted it to come up more often. So let's for now say it was, is this, but I want it to stand out. So actually I didn't make it red, I made it green. Okay, so now, um, what's a word? Um, I went to the park, this is nice. So yeah. I would be writing and I'd have my reds, I'd have my blacks, but every now and then I would see this green one and it really drew my eye to it so I could look and see, okay, when I'm writing this, what is it actually supposed to be? And 99 times out of 100, it wasn't is this, it was this is. And I never would have been, or I mean, I could have figured that out without doing this, but it would have been more difficult. I knew this within a day. I knew exactly what I was doing. So using uh, the sort of color coding technique, you can actually really analyze your strokes, get a better idea for what you're doing, uh, and basically, you know, know when you're making mistakes. That's, you know, nothing wrong with that. So, hmm, I think I think that's about it. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, if anyone knows a better way of doing this, uh, please let me know. Uh, like I said, as far as I can tell, this isn't really a feature that um, Case Catalyst has. It's really something I find helpful as a student. So maybe that's why. I mean. If I was out in industry, I can't really think of many situations where I would use this outside of, um, I don't know, let's say I was doing CART um, for a history class and someone wanted, you know, all the names of historical figures to come out in purple so they would, you know, remember better. I don't even know if ethically I could do that. I, I don't know. But anyways, you're, it's, it's really good for learning. It's good for students. So, yeah, that's that. Let's close this. And yeah, if, if this was helpful, let me know. I, I might do other tutorials. This is probably my best trick, but I figured out a few other things as well. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching.